Hey everybody, JC here. I'm at the California State Railroad Museum today to check out the NMRA exhibit. In case you don't recognize the silhouette of that locomotive, it's the C.P. Huntington. So up on the third floor, they have the Magic of Scale Model Railroading, which is presented by the National Model Railroad Association, which is sort of the overriding group for model railroading. Hey, the entrance has a variety of things going on here. It's got this trestle with this looks like G-scale train on it. Very nice. It's got a picture of John Allen's Gory and Defeated right there. I, I would have loved to have seen that. It was evidently quite amazing. When you go into the gallery, there's a series of dioramas located one after the other showing some of the modeling of various model railroaders and they are simply amazing the detail these put in there remember just because it's a layout doesn't mean it's going to be nothing but trains a lot of times they put other scenes in there this has got a dockyard with ships boats buildings alongside all the railroading stuff so it's called smuggler's cove it's pretty amazing I've never seen anything quite level that detail. I, mean, I can't imagine the amount of time and effort it took to put this together and then have it be put in a museum. It's quite amazing. They even have seagulls in the water. Crazy. Oh, there's some railroad right there. Now over on the left-hand side, they have a listing of various publications from throughout the years. Mall railroading started a long time ago, back in the 30s. Before that, was just regular toys, but actually mall railroading started in the 30s. And they have a sort of a timeline with various equipment, gauge, various gauges. So now here's another layout diorama they have here of Chama, New Mexico. Uh, part of the Rio Grande and Western, uh, Denver Rio Grande Western Railroad. Some very unique piece of equipment. Looks like a, a rotary snow plow there. Coaling tower. The detail, look at the weathering on that roof from the chimneys. Just simply amazing. The quality of the work these people put out is incredible. Oh, pardon my fingers. Okay, so after the war in the late 40s, early 50s was when TT scale came about. It was developed by a guy named Hal Joyce. It's a U.S.-based scale. Um, barely exists today, but you know, it's one of the scales I model in. Uh, sort of. I mean, it's hard to get equipment, but I'm working on it. But here's another diorama here. It's... Very busy. Look at this. Got a turntable there with a gallows type on the top of it. Wow, check out that trestle. That is amazing. I love the way they've integrated the backdrop into the layout. Oh, another amazing trestle there.
Beautiful looking locomotives there. Evidently on the right hand side they have the unpainted version of the brass locomotives. Now we're starting into the more modern age, the plastic age. Instead of having anything built out of wood or metal, it's being made out of plastic now. I mean, you can still get some of these craftsman kits at train shows. Um, I mean, the, the detail you have to have to build some of these things. I mean, if you want a very realistic model, especially of a building, you, I mean, you have to have wood. And then, of course, 3D printing. That's uh, sort of the new Vogue coming out, ready to run models, I mean, including buildings, DCC, so you have digital command control, so you very easily run multiple locomotives on the layout. That looks like Z-scale there, although the rest of this little diorama is not. Occidental California, it's over by Santa Rosa. In case you're wondering why there's no actual sound and I'm voiceovering it, it was very loud in there. There was lots of school children. It was very noisy. And so I didn't want to have any of that distraction. So I chopped the sound out and I'm just narrating it. Sadly, it's I'm not much of a narrator, but... I wanted everybody to have a chance. If you haven't gone to this museum and you're in the Sacramento area, I would highly recommend going to see it. It's one of the nicest model rail or railroad museums in general in the country. I've been to a number of them, and I've never seen a scale model layout setup quite as detailed as this. Now, there are ones that have layouts in them. One in Colorado has one, several other places, but... Um, the level of detail, the dioramas these guys have put together is simply amazing. A lumber mill with logs uh, going up to the the mill coming out of the pond. Lime Kiln, Felton, California. For using to make cement and concrete. I mean, while model railroaders do have an amazing imagination, a lot of them are inspired by actual buildings, actual locations. They model different railroads. There's a lot of railroads in the Bay Area. Northern California. And luckily, model railroad is one of those hobbies that you can start off when you're a kid and then maybe drop it when you're in high school or college, got other important things to do. And then when, later on in life, if you want to join NMRA, use that QRL. In case you're wondering why I'm swooping around a little bit, I'm trying to avoid uh, videoing people that don't want to be videoed. They see you coming with a camera and they stick their hand out. You know, don't video me. I'm trying not to. But this would be a typical model railroader's house. All this stuff, books, various pieces of equipment. The National Model Railroad Association is a very good organization and very helpful Tomorrow Railroaders, they put on conventions and provide different resources. So here's an example of different scales. You get Z at the bottom. So you get Z, then N, and TT right there. Interesting that the other ones have F7s. That's a Another set of TT models right there. You can see various manufacturers. Walther's is a big HO manufacturer and reseller. So if you got the room, 
you can go in and you can have a railroad of pretty much any size you want. And there's books on every possible subject. You have ready-made track, electronics, train sets. That's how most kids get started, train set. Way back in the day, that's how I got started. I think I might still have a few of the cars from that original train set somewhere. And they have a model railroad layout there in the museum that yeah, it's got, you can press some buttons and then things will go. It's under construction. You can see boot got some foam, some track laid, buildings, forests. And they were trying to show it at all a layout at all stages of uh, building. And, uh, this is a little example. This is a tile called the time saver. It's a little switching problem that you use to. They have them at a lot of conferences and train shows where you can have a competition. See more kids running around. There's some models that people submitted in addition to the ones that were in the entryway. Now, they do have a very interesting setup on this back wall I'm about to show here in a second. Um, oops, some more kids. There we go. They have these trains that lay out various scales. I mean, some of these things are 40 feet long. Showing all kinds of different uh, trains, locomotives, eras, freight trains, passenger trains, interurban sets of locomotives. Uh, it's a very spectacular. I would highly recommend anyone who is remotely interested in railroads or railroading to go to the California State Mo uh, Railroad Museum and go up to the NMRA exhibit on the third floor. You will not be disappointed. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.